Welcome everyone to our presentation on definitely theorems for quantum conditional probability distributions with symmetry. Let's immediately get started and consider a black box experiment as for example in the DIQKD case where we have two parties, Alice and Bob and some black box shared between the two. Alice can enter some value X into her black box and black box and receive some output value A. And Bob can enter some input value Y into his set of the black box and receives output value B. Now we don't know how these black boxes might work internally. So all we can do is describe them by some conditional probability distribution of A and B um, conditioned on X and Y. And because this conditional probability distribution describes a black box, we'll just call this P, A, B, X, Y, the box throughout the rest of the talk. Now there are different types of boxes that we want to distinguish or different properties that boxes can have. And the first property that is important is this non-signaling property, which just means that the box is such that Alice cannot use it to transmit information to Bob and Bob cannot use it to transmit information to Alice. The second um, kind of boxes are quantum boxes, um, which are just boxes that are compatible with quantum theory in the sense that they can be described by having some shared state between um, the black boxes of Alice and Bob. And for each input of Alice and for each input of Bob, a P of VM such that the outputs are generated by just measuring this shared state um, using the POVM corresponding to the inputs of Alice and Bob. Now we just note that quantum boxes are subsets of some signaling boxes. Um, finally, we will restrict ourselves to CHSH symmetric boxes throughout the rest of the talk. So CHSH symmetric boxes are boxes where we have n bit strings, input and output, and where the probability of getting A and B conditioned on X and Y only depends on how often the CHSH condition here is satisfied. Um, and these CHSH symmetric boxes, they, they arise pretty naturally in the study of protocols, in the study of, of protocols, um, of DIQKD protocols um, that are based on the CHSH inequality. And um, what will also be important are IID and Definetti boxes. So IID boxes are just box, an IID box is just a box which consists of a single round box repeated n times um, over and over again. Um, and the individual boxes are uncorrelated between each other. And the Definetti box is just a convex combination of IID boxes. Now, as you might imagine, um, it's much easier to make statements on Definetti boxes or IID boxes, but oftentimes we're interested in statements on quantum or non-signaling boxes that don't have any internal IID structure. And so it's useful to have theorems relating the two of them. One of those theorems is this Definetti theorem here, which tells us that there's a CHSH symmetric Definetti box tau. And for all CHSH symmetric boxes that don't have to be definitely, for all those boxes P, we know that we can bound the entries of P by the entries of tau up to a factor linear in N, which uh, won't matter in many applications. Um, so if we learn something about definitely boxes tau or about, uh, about definitely boxes or about this specific definitely box tau here in particular, um, we can also learn something about general CHSH symmetric boxes. Now, one issue with this theorem here is that this definitely box tau is quite general. So in particular, it's not inside the quantum set. And our contribution exactly addresses this issue and shows that now um, there is also a CHSH symmetric quantum definitely box tau. And for quantum boxes, P, A, B, X, Y, it now holds that again, we can bound the probability of um, the probability uh, the entries of P by the entries of tau up to again, a factor quadratic. Now let me introduce one of the applications of this theorem concerning the di diamond norm between two channels E and F. So the diamond norm measures how well E and F can be distinguished by an attacker that is allowed to supply quantum boxes to E and F. And that is also allowed to keep some system for himself that might be entangled with the quantum box that he supplied. Um, and so our theorem implies that the diamond norm between E and F is upper bounded by the distinguishability of E and F by an attacker that is restricted to use non-signaling extensions of this fixed definitely box tau ABXY that we met in the previous um, theorem, which is a quantum box. Now, because the security parameter of a DIQKD protocol can be defined in terms of the diamond norm, this gives us a statement on the security of DIQKD protocols. Um, namely, we know that when we have a DIQKD protocol that is secure against attacks with boxes that are non-signaling extensions of this fixed uh, definitely box tau, then the DIQKD, DIQKD protocol is already secure against um, attacks with arbitrary quantum boxes, which are called coherent attacks. Now, this theorem is already interesting because it relates um, security against completely arbitrary quantum attacks to attacks which have something to do with uh, IID boxes, but it's not quite the strongest statement that one could have hoped for. So the strongest statement would, be, would have been that security against collective attacks, which means the attacks for each round is attacked individually, 
implies security against uh, coherent attacks where we have no such restraint. But our result is actually weaker than that. And one problem that arises when trying to strengthen it is that if we condition this extended box, this tau ABE XYZ, on the knowledge of Eve, then this condition box might, first of all, not be a definite box anymore. But second of all, it might not even have a local structure on the measurements on Ellison Bob's side anymore, which significantly complicates further arguments. So to summarize, we've shown a new definite theorem relating quantum CHS edge symmetric boxes to quantum definite boxes. Um, and this then implies a bound on the diamond norm between two channels um, that can be used in DIQP security proofs. But it's not strong enough to immediately uh, conclude security against coherent attacks from security against collective attacks.